Good morning and welcome to BBTV. Today I'm joined by fund manager Matthew Russell. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Morning, Laura. Okay, so we're here to talk about the Bank of England and the rate decision uh, on Thursday. What are your thoughts around um, this meeting, being that the last meeting we kind of expected a hike and then the market was somewhat disappointed? Well, the market's got itself into a, a similar position again with the front end of the bond market pricing about a 90% chance of a, of a rate hike on Thursday. Personally, I think that it's, they're going to hike as well. I, th I think it's entirely appropriate if you think we've got unemployment close to 4%. Unit labour cost costs have been increasing. Um, PMIs have looked good all year. Uh, and you know, just anecdotally, last week we had the announcement of um, increasing pay for the, for the public sector. So I think it looks like inflation could be starting to come through and we should no longer be on emergency rate, setting, uh, rate levels. Yeah, and obviously the UK has been fairly resilient as well um, to other factors out there in the market. But as a bond fund manager, um, what does this mean for you? What will you be looking at? Well, given that there's already a 90% chance of a hike priced in, even if they do hike, I don't think you'll have too much of an impact on, on bond yields. I think what's more important will be the press conference after and, and the, the messaging around what's going to happen in future. After, after Thursday's hike, that's obviously got a 90% chance of, uh, of, of happening as far as the bond market's concerned, the next hike the market's got priced in is not until the, the end of 2019. So if the Bank of England starts to talk about more robust growth in the economy mm -hmm. uh, and the market starts to think there's a chance that the next hike will be before September 2019, that the, the market will adjust to that. Uh, and I think that's, that's something that we need to be looking out for. OK, so essentially you may see some, some yield spikes around there. Where do you think the pinch point is going to be in terms of that sort of that pain threshold for, um, for bondholders? Well, it, it depends on the, on the type of bond you own, really, and, and the amount of interest rate risk that, that you've got in your portfolio. Mm -hmm. So if you think about gilts, on, you, know, the, you look at a typical gilt index, it uh, has a duration of, of around 11 years. So if, if interest rates right, increase by 1%, you're going to lose 11% of your capital value. So you can think of that in other ways, how much do yields need to rise to wipe out our prospective returns for the next year? And for gilts, it's quite a scary, about 12, uh, about 12 basis points. Then you move down to, say, UK investment grade with an dura average duration of about eight years. And that's around 30 basis points needed to wipe out your prospective returns for the year. But uh, in the short dated space, because it's got, low, it's got lower interest rate risk and the fact of the, the fairly flat yield curve historically, we've got a bit more space uh, for, for, for um, yield, yield increases, which is closer to about 1%. OK, so there's a bit more of a cushion in that short-dated um, UK IG. Absolutely. So in terms of everything else that's going on in the market at the moment and politi uh, politically as well, so we've got Brexit and the noise around there, one of the questions that I've been getting from clients is that essentially there's a, there's a sense of nervousness around that. So do you think Brexit could be a fly in the ointment for... UK credit in general, or what are your thoughts around this? Well, so far, apart from the initial you know, few weeks around the, um, around the vote and the result, um, there, there hasn't really been very much of a reaction in credit spreads. Mm -hmm. So if you look at you know, uh, sterling credit spreads and dollar credit spreads and euro credit spreads, they all tend to, to move in the same direction at the same time which tells me that they're not reacting really to um, country-specific news. That it's more about global risk appetite. So when people want to buy credit, they'll buy dollar credit, they'll buy sterling credit, and they'll buy euro credit. And when they don't want those asset classes or, you know, the kind of the risk-off mode, they'll start selling those. So everything kind of moves together, which, which makes me think that there, there's less about, there's less in the price about Brexit than it is about global risk appetite. Mm. The other thing worth remembering is when you look at, we're talking on the index level here, so when you look at a sterling index, very much like the FTSE 100, the big multinational companies in there whose, whose debt is in there, um, and they, uh, they, a, lot of, a lot of their earnings come from abroad. The other thing which is slightly, di which is different to, to the FTSE, is also you have foreign companies issuing in sterling. So as an example, the biggest issuer in the um, sterling investment grade index is EDF. So essentially, there's a there's a global nature to that index anyway. So you know maybe not quite as much Brexit worry um, in in UK credit as potentially um, we we would envisage. 
Okay, so looking forward to this week, we've got, in addition to the Thursday Bank of England meeting, the Bank of Japan, will they move the dial in terms of rates? We've got the Fed, always an interesting one to listen to the minutes of. Also, in addition to that, it's a bumper week. We've got European CPI and all the all-important payrolls on Friday. So thanks very much for joining us on the sofa here, Matthew. Thanks for having me. And thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.